Hello guys, welcome to our video where we'll discuss today how do we write the famous hello world code in Java. Uh, this is the first programming we are trying to write it. I'll assume that JDK is installed. If the JDK is not installed, you can watch my another video how to install JDK. If you want to write a code in Java, okay, uh, it's very simple. You, you can write it in any simple text editor. It could be like a notepad. And uh, we can also use more sophisticated editing tools, okay, such as IDEs, which is called as Integrated Development Environment, Eclipse, NetBeans, IntelliJ. There are so many editing tools we have it. In the next video, I will explain how to install it and how to write a simple program. When it comes to Java, when we write a program, we will save it in a file with the extension .java, right? Name, we can give it anything and we follow some standards that will discuss it. And when we write a program and save it in a .java, it is called as a source code, the actual code that we write it and we can see that is called as a source code. And uh, when we write a code in Java, it is something like a high level language. It's like a natural language, the way we write a simple English, okay, like that we write it here. But unfortunately, uh, computer don't understand this uh, high level language. It understands only binary language. When I say binary language, it is uh, zeros and ones. So what, what to do when I want to write a program? Of course, we call it as a compilation process. What is the meaning of it? When I write a code in Java, it is like a English like a language. And if I want to run it, I want to make sure that computer understands it, the machine understands it. So before running it, before executing the Java code, we need to convert it into a machine understandable form. Okay, that process is called as compilation. In Java, the process of compilation is a bit different than any other languages. Uh, let us not go in depth into it. Let us take it in a high level. Assume that I use some editors, it could be a notepad. I will write my Java program and I'll save the file with the name called demo. And of course the extension is .java, which is, as I told, it is a source code. In order to run it, I need to convert it. For conversion purpose, I use a, a tool. That tool is called as compiler. And what compiler does basically is, it will check whatever the program you have written in Java, the source code is correct or not. That is, it checks the grammar in simple words. Technically, it is called as a syntax. And once all the syntax and everything is correct, so this will convert it. And for conversion purpose, I use a command called Java C. And that is a compiler, Java C, and followed by the name of the file, which is demo.java. Right? The name changes according to which file you want to compile it. What it is going to do is, once it checks all the syntax, everything is perfect, it will convert it into an intermediate code, that code will be, a file will be generated called demo.class. The extension of this file is a dot class. Is it a binary file? No, it is an intermediate file, which is called as a byte code. In Java, the code is compiled as well as interpreted. In, in the upcoming videos, we will discuss in detail about, okay, how, how this particular code is compiled and executed and so on and so forth. In Java, the code is compiled also and as well as interpreted also. But let us keep it very simple at the beginning of this discussion. So if you want to run, very simple, open a notepad, write the program, give the file extension as .java, which is called as a source code. Before running, you need to convert it. That is called as a compilation. I use a command called Java C with the file name in this example, demo.java. Assume that syntax and everything is perfect. I'll get another file called demo.class, which is called as a byte code, right? And how do I run it after conversion? Uh, that's much more easy. After compiling the code successfully, we can just uh, run it using a GRE, which is called as Java Runtime Environment. Java has got its own environment. It is not just a language. Java is a platform. It has got its own environment. And that JRE will run it in its own computer. It's not a physical computer. It's a virtual computer, which is called as a JVM. JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. I will take the compile code, which is a byte code demo.class. I'll use a command, okay, to invoke the JRE that is called as Java, the name of the file. Please notice here, it is not demo.java. It is not demo.class. It is just a demo. 
name of the dart class file don't give the extension dart class just give java demo and this will invoke jra jra in turn creates another computer of its own java which is called as jvm and in the jvm here execution happens we get the output according to whatever the output we have it a simple process write the code in dart java compile it and run it so three simple steps we have to do it so let us see how do i do it in my system here i have opened the notepad let me write a simplest possible program and every word has to be discussed in detail as of now let me just start with a word called class as is a ready made word in java which is called as a keyword okay as of now let us start with directly using a name called demo demo is the name of this class which is given by the user it's a user defined name it is given by me right and in order to specify the beginning of this and ending of this i use a pair of uh, curly bracket okay the flower braces i use it so this indicates the beginning of the class whereas this indicates ending of the class right in java typically most of the code is written inside a class it is just a block as of now right of course it has got its own different significance and there are much more coding need to be has to be done as of now i'll just write this much code only let me go to file select an option called sar and as i told you just now give a name and extension should be dart java right just create a dart java and let me just open that folder here there is a file created called demo dart java and now i cannot run it okay i want if i want to run it i need to compile it how do i compile it very simple let me just open the command prompt cmd and as you can notice i am in c colon users folder whereas my program is present inside c drive one let me just go there so i'll just uh, use cd backslash it will directly take me to the cd drive and inside this there is a folder called banu to get inside the banu i use cd change the directory and here i'll just give it a name of a folder called banu in order to see what are the files and file folders we have it i use a command called dar these are on the simple dos commands right and in this case as soon as i execute it you will notice it there is a file called demo.java which is recently created and in order to clear the screen i use a command called cls we need not be good at command line commands just a few commands you need to remember this okay now in order to compile it i will use a command called java c i'll just show you what happens here please keep a eye on the right side also so java c it is to compile the java file demo dot java please ensure that jdk is already installed environment everything is set and let me just run it if there is no issues you will get the cursor back and you can notice here a new file is created called demo dot class right next so i took a notepad wrote the code gave a name called demo dot java compiled it i got a class file and this is a byte code dot java is a source file and this is a byte file let me just run that how do i run it java specify the name demo this is name of dot class file do not give demo dot java do not give demo dot class just give demo when i run it let us see what happens of course i got an error the reason is i just wrote a simple starting point nothing as such i have not written any program to okay, perform any action so if you look at the error let us try to understand the error it says main method not found in the class demo okay and it also says please define the main method as public static void main etc etc define in the sense writing a program in java if you want to run any class you need a starting point you need an entry point that entry point is called as main method right if you want to run it you need a starting point that starting point is called as a main method which without, without bothering too much into this details so let let me just copy this word every word of this is another topic right there are a lot of things need to be discussed about public uh, there is a concept called static there is something called void etc etc as of now let me just copy this i'll select this copy so it says when you try to run it says 
there is no main method. So please remember, if you want to run any class, you must have a main method and that is the entry point. So let me just paste it here. Let me just increase a bit. The way I told, this is beginning of the class, this is ending of the class. Similarly, here I'll write another pair of curly bracket to indicate this is beginning of the main method, this is an ending of the main method. Whenever you do any changes, please always save it and every time compile it, okay? So when I say compile it, you have to use Java, say demo.java, you need to check the syntax and then it will convert into byte code. Let me run. Everything is perfect, no errors. Let me try to run. Let me just run Java. I use a code called demo. Earlier, as you can notice here, I got an error. Let me just run it and see what happens here. Did we got any error? No, because we have an entry point. That entry point is called as main method. But unfortunately, I didn't get any output because you just mentioned the entry point, but you are not telling what to do, right? When I say what to do, let us say I want to print my name. For that, we need to understand the basics. Assume that this is a computer. It is in a high level. Let us call this as a system. This entire thing is called as a system. This computer has got so many components like C system, CPU, monitor, keyboard, mouse, etc. Out of this, monitor is an output device, whereas keyboard is an input device. Mouse is also an input device. <clears throat> For any computer to give inputs, we use keyboard and mouse. And of course, if you are using laptop, you use touchpad. There are so many input devices we have it. Even monitor has a touch screen. It can be used as an input device. The standard output device is monitor. We can also have printers, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, system represents a computer. Monitor is a standard output. So let me write this in a programmatic way. Let me just go here. I use a word called system. This is in a simple terminology represents a computer, but in reality, it is a class. Demo is name of the class given by me, me which is called as a user defined class. System is, is also a class which is built in the Java. It is already there inside a Java. It is called as built in class. I'll repeat it. Demo is the class name given by me. It is called as user defined class. System is the class which is already there inside Java. It is a built in class. Like you can notice one more thing called string. This is also a built in class in Java. Now, in this computer, system is computer. In that, out. Out means output. The standard output is a monitor. I want to display something. I use one function called print. Within this print, I want to specify what I need to print. I want to print my name, which is Banu. And Banu, if you observe, it is a letter. ABCD is a letter. It is technically called as a string, set of character, set of letter as a string. In Java, string should be given within double quotes. This indicates beginning of the string. This indicates ending of the string. And that comes under another topic called data types. We'll discuss in detail what is data type, what are the different data we can store, and so on and so forth. This is a one valid instruction that I'm giving it to the computer using Java. This is called as a statement. We need to say where is it is ending. For that, I use a semicolon. I'll repeat it. This is one valid statement. And to indicate the end of the statement, I use semicolon, which is also called as statement delimiter. I can have another statement that is, we will do it next. And as I said, every time whenever you do any changes, please save it. And every time you save it, you have to recompile it. Let us just recompile that. Compilation is done. And again, let me just run it using Java demo. Voila, you got something called one, right? So this is how I write a main program. And of course, people are interested to say, how do I print hello world? Okay, you can print any name you wish. So just go back to the same program. Just write a code called hello world, right? Any changes, save it. No need to close the file, recompile it or else you will not get the latest changes and run it. You get output hello world, right? 
So taking this as a reference, so let us see quickly what and all we have done. In Java, if you want to write a program, you can use any editor such as Notepad, Eclipse, other IDEs, etc. And while writing a program, we use a, a ready-made word in Java, a predefined word in Java called class. These ready-made words or predefined words are called as keywords. They are reserved words and they have a specific meaning, followed by the name. You need to just give a name for it. Okay. And you always need to indicate the boundaries of the class, starting of the class and ending of the class. For any given class, if you want to run, not just you want to write a program and store it, if you want to run, then you need a starting point. That starting point is called as a main method. The standard format of the main method is public static void main. Within the brackets, we write string square bracket. We read this as string array. This square bracket is read as array, string array arcs. And then this indicates starting of the main method. This indicates ending of the main method. And to start with, I just wanted to print some information. I use a system in a layman terminology. It represents a computer. Within system out, it represents an output. A standard output is a monitor. And then I want to perform something called print. So just save it and run it. You get the output here. So thank you so much. We'll continue with further videos.